The second part of the Graph in Row series is going to concentrate on the Windows Settings button. Before we get, go to the Windows Settings button, I just want you to take notice on my graphing screen right now I have two graphs, but more importantly I want you to concentrate on my axis. Currently on the positive side of my x-axis I go up to 10 and I'm counting off by ones. And if I go to the negative side of my x-axis I'm going down to negative 10 and I'm counting off by ones. Also, same thing with my y. If I go up on my y, it's hard to see, but I, I go up to 10 and I'm counting up by ones. And when I go down on my y-axis, I'm going to negative 10 and I'm counting off by ones also. Now when I go to the window setting screen, which is your second button in the top left hand corner of your graphing calculator, it brings up the several settings um, that you can control on your, on your graphing window. And you'll notice that these same settings correspond to the graph that I just had. I went down to negative 10 on my x-axis, I went up to negative, or positive 10 on my x-axis, and I counted off by ones. And the same thing with my y. I went down negative 10 and up to positive 10. And we counted off by ones. Before we do anything else, and before I start changing any of these settings, I'm going to go back to my y editor screen. And I'm going to turn off my graphs by going over to the equal sign and unhighlighting them. And I'm just going to arrow off to make sure they're both turned off, and they both are turned off right now. So I go hit graph. I just have my axis here now. I'm going to go back to the window settings screen now. I'm going to change some of these settings so you can see the effect it has on our graphing window. First one I'm going to change is my X min. I'm going to change it to negative 5. I'm going to leave my X max the same. And then I'm going to count off by 2 on my scale. Hit enter. And then I'm going to change the Y max to 20. And I'm going to count off by fives on that axis. So now if I hit the graph button, here's my new set of axes. Okay, it looks, it looks very different than my previous screen. You'll notice that my X min was negative five. And I'm counting off by two. So this is negative two, negative four, and kind of halfway, that's negative five. And this is going to be two, four, six, eight, ten. I left that unchanged. And then on my y-axis, I changed my y-max to 20, and I count it off by 5. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20. And then when I went down, it's negative 5, negative 10, because I didn't change my y-min at all. So let's go back to the y-editor and turn our graphs back on, just to see what they look like. So I'm going to go back, hover over the equal sign, hit Enter, highlight it, and highlight my other one. Those graphs should be turned on now. Let's go back to the graphing screen. As you can see, our graphs now look a little different than what they did when we first started this tutorial. Um, the major difference here is that when we started this tutorial, our, we only were able to look at the graphs up to a y value or y max of 10. Remember, um, my y scale is 5, so this is 5, 10. And now I get to see what the rest of this graph looks like all the way up to 20 now because I adjusted my settings. The way you adjust your settings will depend on the problem that you're dealing with, but it's just nice to know that the window settings are there to change whenever you need to. The next item that we're going to focus on is the second function of the window button, and that is the table settings. Now just like the window settings control the look of our graphing screen, the table settings is going to control the look of our table screen. So let's go to our table screen right now by hitting second, graph, to bring up our table. And just take notice that our table is starting off at zero and we're counting up by ones. And also that the table setting screen can only show seven values of x at one time with the corresponding y values for whatever equations I have entered in. So let's go back to the table setting screen by hitting second window and change some of these settings to see what the effects are. The three settings that are useful on this screen are the table start, which is zero, and we've already seen the effect of that, uh, the, the change in the table increments and what it counts up by, and it's set at one now, I pointed that out, and then the independent setting, which is set on auto right now. In a couple of seconds, I'm going to show you the facts of what happens when we switch it to ask. But let's just change the table start to 50 right now. Say we need to jump way down the table at 50, and then let's just change our 
table increments to a decimal, let's say five tenths, and let's go to our table screen, second table, to see the effects. As you can see, the table's starting off at 50 now, and we're counting off by 0.5 all the way down from my seven values that I can show with the corresponding y values. So let's go back to my table setting screen, and let's switch that last setting. So I'm going to go down to that independent setting, and I'll switch it to ask, and go back to my table screen. And you'll notice I have a blank table. That is because when the, it was set on auto, those values automatically came up for me. But when I switch it to ask, I have, I have a little bit more control here. I can put in any values that I want. So say I need to jump around on this table and show a different range, a different uh, variety of values. So I could put 2 in if I wanted to. I could go to 15. I could go to 37. And you see I can put in, in any values I want. I don't have to go at a certain increment or anything. And um, this is really helpful for problems in which you need to look at specific values.